Oh, yeah. Um, you said fans needed to be listened to, uh, and they certainly made their voices heard on Sunday. What are your thoughts on what happened? Uh, it was a difficult day for us. Uh, of course, we wanted to play. We wanted to uh, beat Liverpool for the fans, even because uh, our job has to be on getting good performances, good results uh, on the pitch. That's the players' focus. That's my focus. And uh, but as I've said, uh, as I said before the game, uh, we have to listen. We have to uh, hear the fans' voice. It has to be in a. It's everyone's right to uh, to protest. It has to be in a civilized manner, though. It has to be in a peaceful manner. And unfortunately, when it's when you break in, when you when police officers get uh, injured, scarred for life, that's too too far. That's one step too far. And unfortunately, that is um, now. Uh, when it gets out of hand like this, it's a police matter. It, it's not. Uh, it's not about uh, sh showing your um, opinions anymore. Per Carlson. Yes, hello there. Hi. Uh, as a manager, do you hope that the owners will communicate with the fans, both to ease uh, some of the tension, but also to give you? Uh, and your players an opportunity to focus on the important games ahead without having to think about games being cancelled and whatever else? Uh, of course, it's my job, my focus has to be on the results, but you don't really need to be a rocket scientist to see that we have challenges and frictions and things that have to be dealt with. Uh, with the communication, uh, other individuals then than me, of course, uh, have started already uh, with discussing with the fans, um, uh, communicating with, uh, with fan groups, which is going to be massive for us going forward. Uh, I think uh, the players have done terrific to be where they are. Uh, I would be sad to if, if the players got um, their season uh, or the, all the good work they've done uh, disrupted. So our focus is on playing well and getting to a, to a final now. James Savundra. Ollie, it looks like fans will plan further protests if it feels like, if they feel like they're not being heard by the owners. What would be your message to those fans at the moment? Well, a little bit what I've, I've said here as well. Of course, we of course we want to listen. Uh, it has to be in a peaceful manner. It's important. Please um, voice your opinions. We know, as I've said, uh, as a club, we need to communicate better. Uh, and as I said, that's uh, I can refer back to to the apologies. Uh, they've all accepted. Uh, it's. It came out wrong and it was the wrong thing to do, which is a start. Uh, let's continue on that. My work is to... I know that our fans would want a team that is likeable, that is playing attacking football, that is scoring goals, winning trophies, uh, being humble, work hard towards getting better results so they can identify with them. We want to be a Man United team and I, uh, I know that... Um, for our fans, results are important. My my job and my responsibility uh, are the results, and we want to get back to winning trophies. We haven't won for a while, uh, and that's it's of course something we're working on. And that's my, as I said, that's my responsibility. But I'm sure our fans can see that what the players are doing. Carl Anker. Good afternoon, Noy. If I could. Uh... Talk a little bit about Manchester United on the pitch. I Thank you. Talk a little bit about okay. um, I want to mention a little bit. You keep talking about fitness, the fitness levels, and how you often use that as a complimentary term describing players like Paul Popper and Emerson Cavani. In a season like this, that's so compacted, where you're playing games nearly every single midweek, how do you adapt the fitness training for your players to get them up to speed? You know, we've got great staff, fantastic uh, uh, fitness staff. They are, uh, you've got to work on, we've, it's, been, it's been a process since I came in. Since I came in, uh, we, uh, we brought uh, some young staff in, Charlie, young Charlie has been tremendous. We're working on robustness, resilience, being able to play 
50 games for Man United. A, a winning Man United team has players who can play 45, 50, 50 plus games at a high, high standard. So, uh, and that's lifestyle. That is what we do in training, having good habits, um, recovering well. When you don't play, periodize it really well so you know that okay you're going to play in 10 days it, is, it needs planning um, you need to okay you're playing in seven days you, you can train hard now if you might be a sub when you're a sub I know how difficult it is to to get the complete match fitness by not playing full games when you play games it's you get into rhythm and of course then you, all you all you hope for is not getting injuries Sorry, say so yeah. You want you want. Hello. Yes, Carl. Just to follow up. Go on, Carl. Uh, sorry. So to, to bring it back to recent events, when you miss a game like on Sunday, does that affect your periodization? Are there players now? Yeah. Who have to adjust again for Thursday and for next and for Sunday? Coming? Yeah, it's changed the whole uh, cycle. Yes, of course it has done because uh, we had a game. Uh, Thursday prepared for Sunday again so we couldn't Sunday would have been a perfect day to to uh, to test them again physically but it was a day off it was more of a mental challenge then Monday was a harder day in training uh, so it changes the whole thing the whole plan but you've got to be adaptable in this the world that we are in now you can't uh, just uh, think that it's going to be uh, you're going to get the fixture list in August and it's not going to change. So, um, and the boys have been terrific at that and uh, adapting to different challenges. Um, but let's, let's get through to, um, to questions about uh, the game instead. Jamie Jackson. Hi, Ollie. Hi, yeah. Given everything we've spoken about, should one of the Glazers actually speak directly to fans on a conversation? You know, I've I've been communicating with uh, with the owners. I've got an apology uh, personally. Uh, they've uh, apologised to to the fans how this came out. I can't. Uh, I know that the f there has started uh, communication between other individuals than me uh, and the fans. And it, as I said, it is a difficult position to be in for me. This because I I've got to fo focus on the football, and it's. Uh, I've always had a good relationship, and they listen to me, and um, they listen to the, they do listen to the fans, and uh, I'm sure there'll be, uh, there'll be better communication coming. Frederick Philbess. Hola. Yeah. Uh, what kind of approach do you have to a football game going into it with a football league? How do you make the players don't get too confident? It's um, going into the game, wanting to win the game, play a good game of football, approach it as it's um, as we were, as a team. We need to develop. We need to improve. We know we're not at the standard yet where we can go into a game thinking we can play for, uh, uh, on the result. We're not going to play on the result. We're going to play to win that game, and that's uh, the only only way I, I I think we should approach these uh, these games um, to develop to test ourselves challenge ourselves of course there, there might be one or two changes in the selection because of the games coming up as well but um, we have to get into a final uh, everyone says it's done it's not because I've seen bigger upsets than this and uh, Roma has been part of uh, big upsets they beat Barcelona not, not long ago after being 4-1 down Simon Stone. Hi, Ollie. Um, you mentioned that uh, you want to talk about the game, and that's understandable. You talk to us sometimes four times a week in various guises. How disappointing is it that you're on the verge of reaching a final as Manchester United manager for the first time after so many disappointments, and because of factors outside your control? The entire debate is around the ownership of Manchester United and their communication and what they're doing wrong. Of course, as, as I've said here, my, my focus has to, I have to have laser focus on football, on the football, but also uh, understand uh, there are views and challenges ahead uh, outside the football pitch. But f my focus has to be on 
on what's going to happen in the next three weeks on the pitch. And then uh, let's see. Uh, but I, as I said, the, the, communi- the, the right to protest peacefully. The, everyone's got a human right to be heard and the voice to be heard. And, but it has to be peacefully. You know, when you step out of line, when you uh, break in to, on the pitch, break into dressing rooms, uh, I think that's one step too far. And then when it becomes police matters, it's, it's not really, that's not nice. And it's not been helped by certain individuals. And I have to say, that, that's, that's another part of it. But that's... Uh, <laughs> That's your, your end of it. Not you, not you Simon, but uh, that's your end of it. I've been half. I would have yeah. uh, made an agreement to make his 100th uh, appearance uh, for the club tomorrow. Can you say a bit about what you told him to work on uh, this season and what kind of player do you expect him to be in, in five years? Oh, thanks. Uh, you know, we spoke before the Liverpool game that was going to be his 100 game and we said let's let's score a winner for example that's uh, you know that's what he does he scores goals um, he's really added the link up play he's, he's so clever he's so clean on his build up play uh, he's giving assists decision making is one thing uh, of course if, if he's going to be a wide right, if he's going to be a centre forward, it's the filling out, getting used to having players uh, in your back facing facing the wrong way. But if you, because if you want to be a number nine, you, you're going to get hurt. It's going to uh, you've got to stick your head in, uh, break your nose once in a while. And um, he's a pretty boy, and I'm not sure if he if he wants to do that. So, uh, but that's that's a challenge for him. So we we've got loads of work, and and keep just keep doing what he does. He's only 19. And he's doing the right things in, on the training grounds. So I'm very, very happy with him. Can I just check before we go any further? Are there any Italian journalists that would like to ask a question? If you'd like to raise your virtual hand, we can come to you. No? Doesn't look like there is any? Okay. Okay. Um, last two questions. I'm going to I'm Italian. <laughs> you can speak Italian as well, can you? I wish. Good as you can. <laughs> can you really enjoy convincing Edinson to see the light and to stay at Old Trafford for the next season at least? We've had some good conversations, some good uh, chats lately, and uh, even though the uh, decision is still in his uh, in on his in his court, I'm still hopeful, and m- maybe more so. You know, when you when you see him on Thursday against Rome. And then after that game, talking to him about wh- when you do that in front of the Stratford end, full Stratford end, that's a different, that's different, that's magic. And uh, uh, I'm still hopeful, yeah. Well, last question for James Cooper. Hi, hi. Hi, yeah. Um, I, I know you're positive, I know you're constructive, that's the way you go about things. So, so looking ahead, you want to have a United football club, that's what it's all about. Does this situation, can it be fixed, can it be mended, and how does it go about that? Because it has to be mended if you want this to be a, a United Football Club, doesn't it? Of course, it has to be a United Football Club. And... Uh... To make things grow, uh, you need to uh, give him, give it some patience as well. Uh, and of course, I'm ho- hopeful that in time uh, we we can unite and come together. Because uh, frictions and challenges sometimes that's good. Sometimes uh, it can move things forward. And uh, the last few weeks uh, have been difficult. Of course, don't have to be a rocket scientist to to see that. And. Uh, uh, we, I've had backing. I've, I've got to say, uh, they've, they've, uh, I've been put in charge, and I'm responsible for the results. I'm responsible for the football matters, and I understand fans want to see results and trophies. We're hoping that they can see this team is going places, is moving forward, and that can uh, can see that the process we're in, and um, hopefully uh, we can get to a final tomorrow that's that's the the short term uh, short term fix is to get to a final and then we'll, we'll have to take it from there again thank you